The words next generation frustrate me. Boeing and Airbus are both guilty of claiming that their planes are the next game changer in aviation and that the future is just around the corner. But these planes are just a reiteration of a theme. They are simply the same old 1960s to 1980s designs with a slightly better engine and tacked on client facing features like LED lights and fancy windows that dim. So this video will be more of an open letter to the aviation industry. I'm going to ask where are all the planes that were promised? And where is the innovation in aircraft design? If you like this video by the end, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. So far only 6% of my viewers are actually subscribers, so you know, call to action, on with the show. Now in the intro of this video, I made some pretty big claims that aircraft producers like Airbus, Boeing, Embraer and Bombardier, hopefully said that right this time, haven't really innovated in well over 40 years. And I ask where are all the new planes? Well, let me explain. Let's start with Boeing. Boeing hasn't really made a new design, apart from the Boeing 787, in many years. The 707 was their first, followed by the 737 and 747, both which are now up to four generations. Then there is the 777, which is nearing its own third generation with the 777X, and any calls for new aircraft from Boeing are simply X versions of the 757 and 767 in the form of the 797. The 787 was a totally clean sheet design and really brought new technology forward. But all these other planes don't really seem to have been anything that new. Why haven't Boeing used the learnings from the 787 and created a new clean sheet design? Sure, the Boeing 737 MAX has features from the 787, but we all know what happened there. You can check out my latest video on the 737 MAX here, where I go into much more detail. Airbus is guilty of this as well. They have the Airbus A320, which has now a Neo version, standing for a new engine option. And that's all there is. The same airframe design, but with new engines with some bells and whistles like large cabin storage and LED lights. This has been successful enough for Airbus that they rolled out the NEO program to the A330 series and there are rumours that it will also offer an A350 NEO in the next few years. Airbus also proposed multiple versions of the A380 program including a NEO version but that never got off the ground due to low customer demand. Again, I've gone into way too much detail in another video all about this that you can check out here. Airbus does have the Airbus A220 program that I consider a true next generation aircraft. It can easily crush the A320 series, especially the A318 and A319, and not to sound like a broken record at this point, but I also have a video all about that right here. I could also argue that the A350 is a new design and a very good one at that, but it's actually a spiritual clean sheet successor to the Airbus A340, so points there as well. As for Embraer, they are still nipping around the market and I've heard good things about their E-Jet 2 program. It's a shame that the partnership with Boeing fell through as I think with the A220 and Airbus, the E-Jet 2 program would have given Boeing a well needed shot of innovation, but that's a topic for a future video. But are the aircraft manufacturers to blame for all this, or is it in fact the airlines? You can see that one thing that airlines detest and airframe builders want to avoid when it comes to releasing a new aircraft, and that is retraining pilots. Pilots and their time is very expensive. Airlines only want to pay for pilots when they're actively flying or in training. Thus, if there is a way to make an aircraft better with better innovations but without actually retraining pilots, then airlines could reap the rewards of both worlds. Hence, we have what is known as a type rating. Airbus and Boeing both seek to have the same commonality of type between generations, so pilots who are trained on one aircraft can also fly another. 
For example, we see this with the Boeing 737 series with the MAX earning the same commonality type rating as the previous versions in the series. Well, until recent history that is. Now Boeing and the airlines have to retrain the pilots to fly the new version of the MAX, negating any savings made. Without that advantage, you have to wonder if Boeing would have been better served building a true clean sheet design for the small plane short haul market. The same could be said for Airbus. They've been sitting on the A320 series design for decades now, and whilst it's very good, I don't believe that a near upgrade truly counts as innovation. In fact, isn't the innovation in engine technology from the likes of GE and Rolls-Royce rather than Airbus themselves? Airbus has been working on a true new A320 successor, but we have yet to see anything concrete. So then perhaps the answer lies on new market players like China's Comac with its C919 series, or perhaps the rumblings we hear from Japan and its own homegrown aviation industry. These future aerospace giants have no need to follow the ways of the West and could very well bring to the market an aircraft design that is truly the next generation of aircraft. I should also point out that perhaps market forces are to blame as well. As we have seen with the Boeing 747 and the Airbus A380, the market has slowly trended away from larger aircraft and hub-to-hub -hub travel to more point-to-point -point travel with smaller, more fuel-efficient aircraft. Airlines are now seeking planes that can fit into existing airport infrastructure, such as the gates and the runways that we typically see, that are as fuel-efficient as possible and are as comfortable as possible for passengers. Plus, with any brand new aircraft type that comes to the market, and I'm talking about a truly innovative aircraft design that is unlike the standard tube and two engines that we see, there is going to be a whole bunch of research required to become a certified type. You see, the government agencies that certify these aircraft are actually incredibly familiar with this design and I dare say they have an existing framework for certifying these types of aircraft. If you create a brand new type of aircraft, say something along the lines of a blended wing design, then it's going to be a very different legal process indeed. And probably many more years until the general public becomes comfortable enough to fly on board. This video today was brought to you by my Patreons. Whilst we are a very small group, I want to shout out to them for supporting me and the channel, including special sponsor Troy Tempest. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to join the gang and support the channel and see these videos ad-free, behind the scenes, and live streams, then jump onto the link in the description. And if you have an idea for the next video on this channel, I want me to let you know that I read every one of these comments, so please write down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then I hope you stick around, subscribe to see what's coming next. Thank you so much for watching.